Hank, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Joseph Z. I wouldn't miss this. Oh, man, that's awesome. Thank you for the honor. Oh, sir. Well, we've had a, a lot of things going on in the world, in the nation, in, in what's happening ever since 2020 all the way up till now. And you've been a voice of prophecy. You've been a voice saying what's happening, how to lead the body of Christ through. What's happening right now, Hank? What do you see? Well, I, I, I'm just going to say this. I really sense that right now the most important thing is, you know, people can quote what's going on in the world, and there's a lot that is happening, but not everything that we see is legitimate. So there's a lot of uh, false narratives, yeah. a lot of uh, things that the enemy wants us to believe and such. So we have to have, I think, the greatest perspective there is, and that is heaven's perspective. And it comes by, I think, seeking the heart and the face of God more than anything. Yes. And so I feel like my responsibility in the earth is to bring God's heart. Yeah. And I've often said it to him, Joseph. I said, you know, God, your heart, it demands that you have voices. That's why the Bible says in Amos 3, 7, that God doesn't do anything in the earth unless he reveals and it's singular, his secret, his secret to um, his sort of the prophets. And that secret, I asked the Lord one day, I said, what is that secret? He said, Hank, it's the very essence of my heart. How I feel about things, my heart, my mind, my will, my intent, my agenda. And then God says he reveals it. Well, it demands that the people then hear truth. Yeah. And not just truth, but hear that precious, sacred heart of God. And so my job is, and, and, and my quest is, is I want to capture the heart of God and I want to bring it to a people that deserve to know what he's saying. And I'm doing the best that I know to do that. Yeah. And it cuts through the lies. It cuts through the darkness. Yes, sir. And it counters a lot of things that are happening today. So I think that's the number one thing is God's trying to let people know that he hasn't forgotten us and that this thing is not going to go the way of evil. Yeah, there is a revolution of light, which the definition of revolution means a purposeful overthrow of darkness. And that's what God's do. And so uh, we are being set up for something great and greater than you and I. But it's meant for our children and our children. God's children. Praise God. Hank. Yeah, I'm thinking you. about, you know, how you guys navigate with Flashpoint. And it's a, it's a very unique like movement that God started. And and you really have the prophetic side of things. And then there comes the intellectual side of things and people just bring it together and there's such a clarity that happens now i know that you, you're talking about what's happening in the nation has the lord showed you about the next coming year or two years down the road just anything that you sense uh, more i think you, you're saying it just that the lord has great hope for us and he wants us to walk yeah. on that but how do we get there hank and then again this isn't built joseph off of a, a false pretense right you mentioned flashpoint you know the intellectual side yeah that probably isn't me oh you no know, I, I my favorite I love it. Subject in school was uh, art and lunch and well, PE. your cartoons are awesome, by the way. <laughs> it happens up to all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. but but the prophetic side, because I realize that every uh, king, governments always had the prophetic voice that helped to steer them in the direction of what heaven said. But but something that I think is important, and and it's this, and that is when we are looking at the things that are happening right now on the earth regarding the future. Yes, you've got to go back and you've got to look at uh, what God has already said that has come to pass. But then what has God said about the future Yes, before the future has, has come? Wow. And so I go back to, I remember it was in 2018, uh, Brother Kenneth Copeland had asked me to come down and to spend a couple of days in prayer. And wow. he said, you know, I'll give you as much time. And he gave us, I was with another guy who was in heaven, Bishop Harry Jackson, he's a good friend of mine. And we were uh, praying with Brother Copeland like 12 hours a day. And he said, you know, bring a word about this new decade. Bring a word about what you see for the future. Well, one particular thing that happened was on February 12th. And it was right around 2018, I believe was the, the, the year. And I was getting the house ready for Brenda, who was working at the office. Yeah. And it was on February 12th. So I was doing a good job two days before <laughs> Valentine's Day. And I was had this stubbory grease smear. I don't know what it came from. And I, I didn't realize you don't use water with it, right? Because I'm a guy. <laughs> and so I'm imagining it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I remember getting ready to complain. And I shot out into a vision. And I was taken, for whatever reason, I'm not putting dates on this. Oh, yeah. But I was taken 12 years into the future. Come on. And I began to see God sweeping through 
uh, our country after a season of tremendous harshness. Uh, I saw a plague. And so, yes, that was the word that I brought Brother Copeland. And he said in 2018, he said, you need to bring this word, how there will be a, a plague that will be man-made. They'll shake their hands with China. You my pray. gosh. I yeah. Know that. Yeah. And these yeah. are documented. And then, yeah, uh, then God said that the decade would start off harsh, and uh, but then it would end up in rest. I heard you say that. And so this is where we're heading. And what we have to understand, you know, we often talk about the days of Noah. Yeah. Well, how ironic is it that Noah's name means rest? And if you look at it from a prophetic narrative, in the days of Noah, God judged the deep things because it says the fountain of the deep state or the deep was broken open and the windows of heaven were open. Well, whenever the windows of heaven open, whatever is on the earth, God prevails over it. Come on. That's why every mountain, it's why every uh, high hill was covered. Yes. And that's what God is trying to say with his glory. And that's where we're heading. So we started off harsh, but now we're heading into rest. When you see the water, like this is a strange question, sure. right? Does water speak to you like as the glory of the Lord covers the earth, as the waters cover the earth? The yeah. Lord shall... Does the Lord ever speak to you through water? Do you see that sometimes? You know, I think what's significant. So we've had uh, several prophecies. In fact, Dutch Sheets, who's yeah. a friend of ours, uh, God just gave him a prophetic word to really pray and cover the water systems, the waters. And the Lord had said that uh, several uh, years uh, prior, and he said, you know, that they're going to go after our, our bread and our water. Wow. But the Spirit of God says, I'm going to counter it, because think about what God did when there was darkness upon the earth, gross darkness. You know, uh, it was the earth was without form and void. That's Genesis. Yes. God countered. He was hovering over the waters, and God said, let there be light. So it was a countering movement of light, and that's what wow. God's doing. Think about the, the the day that we're living in. Yes. Okay, darkness is here. It's without form. People don't know what identity they are. They don't know what's going on. And they're void, and they're searching for all kinds of things, so they've invited evil in. But God's countering it with light. So water is very important. Watch the rain. Watch the water. Come on. Because the Spirit of God is countering it, but he's also using it. I'll talk about water real quick if you don't mind. Sure, so please. I a, a church with Flashpoint. It was um, Pasadena, California. Okay. And I was in my room and I was praying. And, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of God came into my room. And I couldn't move, Joseph. And I was shaking. And, and uh, I, I didn't even want to lift my face because of the majesty of his presence. And I was shaking and I said, God, I can't even lift my head. Why, why have you come wow. at this time mm. like this mm. where your servant can't even move? And he said, because I want the people to understand this is what's in process. And he said, Hank, when I delivered a nation, when I dealt with a socialistic empire of Egypt, you know, with Pharaoh, that's really what it was. Israel, a nation, was under the slavery of that socialistic empire. God sent on purpose the pillar of cloud by day and the fire by night, which is his presence. Yes. So his presence, he wanted them to see it, feel it, experience it, but it ultimately delivered the nation. He said, you are experiencing this presence because this is where I'm heading and the depth of what I'm doing. Now, lastly, he said, now prophesy tonight. So I, I didn't know what he was going to say. And he right. prophesied to watch the rain that would begin to come all over Florida. And he said, or not Florida, California. And he said, listen, there'll be flood waters. Come on. Well, they're having flood waters. We don't want destruction. How do you think Elijah felt when he had to prophesy a three and a half year famine and have to live, be part of it? But he said, there'll be a sign, a, a triple rainbow. And they're going crazy. It's made headline news. It really? They said, this is so rare. And he said, California, I'm gonna give you a triple rainbow. It's amazing. And, and it just happened. And he said, because I'm gonna show you that I'm touching three generations and I've not forsaken California, I've not forsaken you, and I've not forsaken this great country, the United States. You know, Kim Clement lastly said something to me. He, I remember him praying over me. He said, Hank, you're gonna stand in a place that I'm not permitted to in the earth. And I didn't know what that meant. He's in heaven. But he said, you have to continue to prophesy the redemptive plan that wow. God has for this nation. Everything that you see has to be through the redemptive lens. And here's what redemption is. It may be evil, but God always has a plan, Joseph, of help and hope. And that's what I love about you. You have tremendous accuracy, Thank you, sir. but you always bring the people back to the redemptive plan. So I just want to salute Thank you with you, Hank. Yeah. Hey, I, you know, there's one other thing I want to ask you. I just want to pivot for a moment. And that's, sure. how did you first start hearing of God's voice? How old were you? When did that happen? Well, I was on the island of Guam, five years of age. And uh, really? Yeah. You know, it's crazy because the Bible 
uh, says in Genesis 3.22 that in every man, God said, now man will know good and evil. So it's built in us. Yeah. What's also built in us is, is the very image of God that cries out for our creator. That's why when you get born again, there's two things that happen. The spirit of God in you cries out, Abba, Father, but your own spirit cries out because you're reconnected with the Father. So there was something inside of me at five that was longing to hear God. And I was out by my parents' uh, uh, station wagon over in Guam. And I heard a voice speak to me and I wanted to know who made those clouds. And that's the first time I ever heard the voice of God. And Joseph, I don't know if it was audible. I was five, but it was so loud that I thought my dad or somebody was talking. Then growing up, people used to say, they, and they used to say, Hank, you're psychic. Well, that was all they could, could say. And I was a secular heathen <laughs> because I could walk in and I could, I don't know what it was, but I could read people. Yeah. And, uh, not, and maybe, thank God he got a hold of it because it could have gone a different direction. Of course. So they would tease me about that. But then I remember I was 18 years of age and there was a, uh, that's when I got saved, 1984. Mm. And there was a girl that lived down the street, I'll make it very quick, that got in an auto accident. It wasn't her fault. She was a passenger, a truck hit her. She was in a coma. They said she was going to die. And so I had a dream and Jesus appeared in the dream and he walked up and he said, tell this girl's family on Resurrection Sunday, I will appear and I will put my hand upon her and she shall live and be raised up. Wow. And you got to understand, I am a few months old in the Lord, wet behind the ears, <laughs> man. So I went to the family. They said, how dare you bring oh. this to us? Our girl is dying. Oh. The whole neighborhood made fun of me. So oh. I thought, well, I'm going to prove to them that I hear God. So I told them, uh, meet me at the light pole. So like 40 people who grew up with me. <laughs> Really? Met me at the light pole, and I had uh, encyclopedias trying to prove that God talks today. <laughs> I didn't even use my Bible. How stupid, you know? <laughs> they didn't know the Bible. But anyway, it happened on Resurrection Sunday, Joseph. Uh, the Lord came in and healed that girl. She's alive today. Come on, man. And then what began to happen is I started uh, seeing things where I would begin to, God said to me one day, he said, write down what I show you and keep them secret. If you want my secret, you have to be trusted with secrets. To keep it. And so I said, okay. And so I would journal and, and then I would see it be uh, national breaking news. And I started going, wait a minute, something is happening to me where God, you are speaking something and, and it's happening before my eyes. And one of them was, I was in a, a conference in Texas and I, this is the first time I really had a word nationally. And I saw the president at the time, Clinton, go into a hallway with a dark haired woman and be in a adulterous affair. And I came out thinking, hey, this is gonna be an accepted word. And I prophesied it thinking that, you know, and it hadn't happened. And the pastor pulled me aside afterwards, rebuked me, wow. told me I can't be political. Well, six months later, it was all over the world. Yeah. You know? So that's kind of the journey, um, kind of started in dreams. But um, I always had a tenderness in my heart where I just wanted to know God. I sensed that. That's what I want. Time. Yeah. All the time, actually. Thank you. Yeah. I, I wish I had another hour to talk to you because yeah, now okay. I want to ask a hundred questions oh, just, about God. the prophetic and the way you move and your sensitivity. Because when you, you know, I'm, I'm a prophetically sensitive person also. And whenever I get near you, Hank, I sense that on you so much. Like there's, you're the warrior and you're also very empathetic to things and it creates a unique thank personality. You. I understand it. And I'm so grateful for you. Hank, thank you for leading thank today. You. Thank you for standing up. Thank you for being with Gene and making this thing go. Thank you as well, Joseph. It's always an honor. Sir, thank you. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. All right. Bless you. Yeah. I want to say a very special thank you to our partners. Whether you've been a partner with us from the very beginning or if you've recently become part of our partner family, we simply want to say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you because it means so much that you're standing with us. We're accomplishing a lot together. And I'll tell you, if you're interested in becoming part of our partner family, I'd encourage you to go to josephz.com or text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. You know, we wanna welcome you to the family and we will be calling you. If you become a partner, we call you regularly and we love talking to you. Our team calls you, it's not a call center, it's our team. We love our partners. I hope you'll consider it, I hope you're praying about it and I hope you become a part of our partner family today.
In today's world, there's a lot of noise and sensationalism by many claiming to hear the voice of God. They cite their predictions and their own experiences. Now, some are legitimate and some are not, but how do we know the difference? In some ways, prophecies become a mystified topic. Yet as global chaos is obviously increasing, it is imperative that we must hear and know the voice of God and true prophecy. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Demystifying the Prophetic. Now, it's taken me my whole life of walking through the Word of God and my own encounters and experiences to bring this to a place where we land at biblical truth and sound doctrine, yet absolutely celebrating the precious gift of prophecy. In this book, I deal with everything from trances and dreams, visions, deja vu even, different types of prophets, we talk about it. We even cover the topic of false prophets. How do you determine who's true and who's false? We talk about discerning the times, navigating strange encounters. People talk about angels appearing to them, entities appearing to them, they hear voices. All of these unique things we begin to deal with at a very powerful level with this book. I bring you straight to the written word of God, and I want to say to you, isn't it time we understand the purpose of prophecy? After all, it is the spirit of prophecy that gives testimony to Jesus. It's time for results in your life. It's time for you to begin demystifying the prophetic. This book will help you. I promise you need this book. It'll break you out of containment. It'll bring you to a place of clarity, and it will open up the understanding of the voice of God and prophecy functioning in your life by the written word of God. This is gonna really help you. I encourage you to get your copy today by going to josephz.com.